Production switchers. What are they? Why are they used? How do they work and why are there so many buttons? Believe it or not, behind virtually every multicam broadcast sits a person operating one of these button behemoths whilst directly impacting what the viewer sees on screen. In this video, we're going to unravel the mysteries surrounding production switchers and break down the concepts that make them so instrumental to the live TV environment. Hey everyone, this is Ryan Corker with Broadcast Buddy TV, the all-around go-to channel for all things broadcast television. And on this channel, it's our goal to equip you with the tips, tricks, and know-hows to help make you a better broadcaster. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you never miss an upload. With that being said, let's get started. So before we break down how switchers work, we should probably talk a little bit about their role in the video production environment. Switchers. As their name suggests, switch between multiple video sources and sends them to various destinations. They're a requirement for live multicam shoots and allow for the ability to superimpose graphics on top of video. Now wait a second, you might be thinking, why do I need a switcher for this? I can do all this in post-production while editing. Well, yes, you can, but that's not the point of a switcher. A switcher is used with emphasis on the live part of the production. All of the video transitions and added graphics are done in real time. This is why switching is also sometimes referred to as instantaneous editing. Now the title of the person responsible for operating a switcher is the technical director, which is often shortened to just TD. Traditionally, the TD works closely with the show director, listening for specific production cues telling them which sources to take on air. When a source, like a camera, is on air, it just means that that is currently what's going out to the broadcast feed that everyone is receiving on their TVs, or whatever medium they happen to be watching on. We also call this destination the program feed. Alright, now that we have a better understanding of what they're used for, let's take a deeper dive into the basic principles of how they work. To do that, we need to fundamentally understand a basic video switch, then expand from there. The most basic of switches will have two inputs for sources and a single output for a destination. It will have two buttons, one for each source. Pressing the button for a specific source will tell the switch to pass that video input to that video output. You've actually more than likely have used a simple video switch without even realizing it. Whenever you've changed the input of your TV at home, you've been activating an internal switch inside your television that switches between the video and audio sources from connected devices like your Blu-ray or Xbox and outputting them to your actual screen. All right, so let's build on this concept. Let's say our switch now has one additional output. With this addition, we've now turned our basic switch into a router. A router allows for essentially one to many, or in other words, a single input can be routed to many different output destinations. Each one of these paths, by the way, is referred to as a bus. A bus is basically a path in which you can route a video signal to a particular destination. Remember that term because it will come up again later. Routers are important and deserve a video of their own. I mention them here because under the hood, this is virtually what a production switcher is. As a matter of fact, one of the ways the switcher is marketed is by the number of inputs and outputs it has. But really, what makes a switcher a switcher, and not a router, fundamentally comes down to the ability to perform clean transitions on the output when changing between sources. So there are two key words in that statement, clean and transition. So what does that mean? Well, without getting too technical, a video picture on your screen is made up of scan lines that are essentially drawn from top of the picture to the bottom. This is done many times a second. Because of how quickly this happens, it would be very unlikely that two different video sources side by side would be drawing their lines in the exact same time as the other. If you were to try to switch back and forth between these signals, you would see a visual glitch on your screen because essentially it gets interrupted when in the middle of drawing the first video signal so that it can wait for the second video signal to start drawing from the top. When using a router, this isn't typically a big deal because the destination you're switching isn't an on-air source, meaning you'd never see the glitch. Production switchers, on the other hand, have the ability to switch between these different sources cleanly, that's to say, without the glitch. 
This is done with the introduction of an additional signal called reference, which essentially makes all the other video signals draw their picture at the exact same time in unison. It gets a little bit more complicated than this, but don't worry, I'll make future videos going more in depth into these concepts, like video signals and reference. For now, we'll just keep them basic. So that's the clean part, but what about the transition part? Well, now that we have our video sources in time with each other, we can now do more advanced transitions such as frame accurate cuts, dissolves, wipes, and digital video effects when changing a source to a destination. So how does a switcher implement such a powerful feature? Well, in order to utilize transitions properly, we're going to need to add another video bus to our switcher. You see, in order for us to transition to something, we need to be able to pre-select a source before we initiate the transition. This is where your switcher's ability to preset comes in. By adding a preset bus, we now have a look ahead area that we can pre-select a source. Then when we are ready, we can initiate the transition we choose. This transition will happen on what is called the background bus of the switcher. Upon initiating the transition, the background bus will change to what was on the preview bus and the preview bus will change to what was on the background bus, creating a source swap between buses after the transition has completed to which there are typically three ways a transition can be initiated on a switcher. In the transition area, you'll find a cut button. This will perform a frame accurate cut between the preset video to the background output, replacing the current program output with the preset video. The automatic button performs the transition type selected for a predetermined duration. In the fader bar, which will essentially do the same thing as the auto button, except the timing will be manually controlled based on how long you physically take to move the position of the fader bar from its current position to the opposite side. You could also perform a cut directly on the background bus if you wanted to skip the formalities of using the preset bus and the cut button, though we call this hot punching in the industry because there is an added level of risk by directly changing what's on the line without using the preset bus and not previewing your source first. So that is how the transition is performed. But clean transitions aren't the only thing switchers have going for them. They also have the ability to superimpose additional video layers on top of the background bus, changing the output from a static video source to a composite of multiple sources. Think about your typical newscast. You see your local news anchor sitting at the desk and all of a sudden a picture of what they're talking about appears over their shoulder. This over the shoulder graphic appearing on screen is actually thanks in part by the TD who has just added this video layer on top of the camera layer. This process can be achieved by using components on the switcher known as keyers. A keyer is actually its own destination within the switcher. Therefore, any input source can be routed to it. This is done by the key bus, which is usually found above the background bus on the switcher. The TD assigns a video source to it, such as an external graphics system, and then can superimpose this video layer over top of the background bus, allowing them to create the previous mentioned effects. Keyers can be usually added by cuts and dissolves, and in some cases, wipe and digital video transitions. Most switchers these days have multiple keyers, which just allow for multiple superimpositions to make for a more complex final composite. It should also be noted that these keyers can have either a fixed or adjustable priority. A keyer's priority just refers to what level in the layered video stack it is in comparison to the others. For example, if keyer 2 was a higher priority than keyer 1, then the video source in keyer 2 would be layered over top of the video source in keyer 1, and all keyers have a higher priority than the background bus. So when you put all of these concepts together, you get what's called a single mix effects bus on the switcher, or also called an ME for short. A switcher can scale up from here by adding multiple MEs, which grants you the benefit of greater creative freedom in switching and compositing video signals. The additional ME's composited outputs can even be re-entered onto other ME's in the same switcher to create what's called multi-layered effects. And at the end of the day, that's all a switcher needs to be a switcher. So I hope this video has helped drop the veil on the mysteriousness of production switchers for you by breaking them down into their basic concepts and building them back up again. Now there are some concepts that I greatly simplified in this video in an attempt not to draw too much away from switchers being the focus, 
But like I said earlier, I am planning on making more videos like this that'll go more in depth into those concepts in the future. So if you are interested in learning more, please don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time right here on Broadcast Buddy TV.